guys, Eden here, and welcome to this month's q and I'm so sorry I haven't been able to put up a video for you guys. It's just been really busy. Um, Blackout came to visit me, and so did the gaming cat. So it's just been a little hectic. But uh, it's all been a good fun. They came down for their vacation time, and now that they're gone, I can finally get back to work. So that's what's going on. And I didn't put up a Q&A for last month. I'm really sorry. I was mostly waiting on you guys. I didn't get enough questions. I try to get at least 10 questions for my Q&A. So I didn't get that this time, so I was basically just waiting until I accumulated enough questions. So if you guys could send me some questions, that'd be awesome. And so that way for next month's Q&A, I won't be struggling like this. So we're just going to go ahead and go with it, alright? So we're just going to jump straight into the questions. Alright, first question. If you were forced to live off one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's a really hard question, guys, because I seriously love food. Like, food is a thing. Um... I I don't know like I'm really partial to Italian dishes and I'm really big into Asian dishes but I think if I were to live on one food for the rest of my life it would probably have to be kimchi fried rice or some kind of fried rice in general just because I love the flavors that soak into the rice the different vegetables that go into it meats and seasoning and it's really good um, the second behind that would probably be ramen and I'm not talking about like the really crappy ramen that you get in the packages that are like 50 cents a piece. I'm talking about the really good genuine home cooked noodles and like with the broth and all the veggies and stuff type of ramen and a little spicy. So if I was stuck eating one food for the rest of my life, it would have to be between those two. All right, so next question. <laughs> when you're playing a really good game and just when you're at a really good part, your stomach goes south, what do you do? Well, I don't know. Depends on what you mean by my stomach goes south. Does that mean that I have to go take a dump? I hope not. But if I'm at a really good part in a game and, like, I feel really sick, I just kind of bear through it. Especially if it's during a cutscene where I can't, like, pause the game. So I just deal with it. But as far as feelings are concerned, if I feel like a dip in my stomach is because I feel like some kind of anxiety then I just sort of push through it and bear with it and deal with it as best I can. I don't really know how to answer that question. I'm hoping it's more on the technical term or the emotional term because if it's on the technical aspect of I literally feel sick to my stomach, then I guess I would have to just leave Ugh, and hope that I can pause the cutscene. So, <laughs> next question. What's your view and opinion on the old school retro games? Also your feelings on them making a comeback. Well, I've always been an old school head. I've always really liked the old games. Uh, as far as them making a comeback, I played a lot of the Mortal Kombat games, a lot of the old fighting games, and I enjoyed the fact that they are coming back with something. It's nice to get a new look and feel to that aspect of it. It's, it's nice. As far as like how I feel about them getting a comeback or having a remake, it really just depends because, I mean, it can go either way. Like it can be a really good game that goes south or it could be a really good game that goes, you know, really high up. Or as far as um, some of the games that have been recently released, I'm really looking forward to them coming out um, just because I've just been a gamer and that's just what I do. So who knows? Uh, as far as I'm making a comeback though, as long as it's a restart and a refresh and a revamp for the better, then I'm all for it. I mean, because you can always go back and appreciate the things that you enjoyed from the old things, but if it goes back and gives it a new facelift and it, you can still enjoy it for what it was and what made you fall in love with the game, then that's really all that matters as far as that's concerned. If you could meet anyone at all, dead or alive or in the future who could who would it be and why uh if i could meet anyone at all well on the joking side i would want to meet bill gates and be like dude can i be you for 24 hours because that man makes literally 300 something dollars every second if i could be that man for one like one day that would be the best thing ever um <laughs> if uh if i could meet anyone dead or alive or in the future Though, on, on a serious note, I would love to meet no boy Matsu. No joke. Either him or Joe Hisaishi, because I'm just such big, like, I'm big, I'm a big music person, and Final Fantasy, and 
anime in general has just been my whole life, so it's their music compositions are what give the stories and give the movies and anime shows that I enjoy the most, like a lot of the Ghibli films, the breath of life that they need to create this wonderful vision. And you can have a great story, you can have great characters, you can have, you know, great graphics, but to me, music ties it all together. Music is the emotion that puts it all to perspective and gives it the depth that you feel like it needs to have to create this great giant picture and it completes it together and the music is what gives it the feeling and that's what solidifies it for me is the music so I would love to meet them because no boy Matsu is known for his music for Final Fantasy and Johi Saishi did a lot of the Ghibli films the ones that I enjoy the most uh, and if you want to throw in Yajinori Mitsuda, who did a lot of cr the Chrono series, uh, and he did the music for uh, Xeno Saga and Xeno Gears, which is another series of games that I enjoy, I would love to meet them and just sit down and talk with them and ask them what brought them to the conclusions and what made them feel like that these particular movements is what created the story and helped meshed it all together. So yeah. What is something you learned as a child and gained a new perspective as an adult? Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> like, no joke, guys. Looney Tunes cartoons are what I learned and grew up with as a child, and I gained a new perspective as an adult. And I've learned that Looney Tunes is not meant for children. <laughs> like, it's not. It's, it's not meant for children at all. Like, there are a lot of perspectives in there that you look on as an adult, and you're going, wow. Like, for instance, Pepe Le Pew is a rapist and a stalker, and Bugs Bunny is a cross-dressing, you know, like, sadist. He's a sadist masochist. Uh, well, that, well, I really didn't say he's a masochist. But he's a sadist, for sure. Um, Elmer Fudd is a closet homo- like, as a closet homophobic- or not homophobic. He's a closet homosexual. Like, there's so many instances where I cannot tell you Bugs Bunny has cross-dressed and he has legit fallen in love with Bugs Bunny. And even after finding out that he's a man, he still is just okay with it. Uh, Yosemite Sam, he has anger issues. Um, Freaking... It's the same thing with Sesame Street, I just realized. Sesame Street is super, like, there's so many, like, socio, like, socio, sociological undertones in that show and they teach you to judge people and it's it's kind of ridiculous but definitely Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes I did not realize um, Porky Pig has a speech impediment. Uh, he has Tourette's. Daffy Duck definitely has a speech impediment. Uh, Marvin the Martian is slightly psychosocial like psychosomatic. He's just out there. Um, Foghorn Leghorn again kind of Kind of a chauvinistic control freak. Uh, Tweety Bird. I don't even know what's up with her. It's weird. I thought Tweety was a man for the longest time. No joke, guys. I really did. But yeah. So that's something I learned as a child and gained a new perspective on as an adult. Looney Tunes cartoons. Take Just take a moment and think about that. What kind of games do you not like to play? Do you have a preference in regards to genres? Um... I am not a big fan of MOBAs, like Smite and League of Legends and Heart of the Storm, or Heroes of the Storm. Those kind of games, just uh, StarCraft. Like Mo MOBAs are just not a big thing for me. Um, I used to be big into MMOs, um, but again, I was a huge EverQuest addict and never winter nights and then after i got that whole intervention thing those just kind of died for me so i'm not a huge mmo fan like i used to be if i were to find one that i really enjoyed like guild wars or guild wars 2 i might be willing to get back into it um but as far as that's concerned i'm just not a huge fan um as much as i like civilization 5 those kind of games like i enjoy them more with people i don't like i don't enjoy playing those kind of games solo they're very boring to me a lot of milling. Um, those are the sort of games that I like to play with my friends. Uh, but definitely not by myself. I would never... I have not loaded up Civilization V since the last time I played it with my friends. It just it just does, does not appeal to me. 
Uh, yeah, so I think as far as that's concerned, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, if there's a good game you would like to see turn into a movie, which would it be? And if there's a good TV show movie you would like to see turn into a game, what would it be? Um, I would love to see either Xenosaga or Xenogears turned into a movie. Like, I feel like that could be done, especially with all the new movies that have come out, like Pacific Rim and Godzilla and Cloverfield. Like, I feel like we have the technology to be able to do that now. So I think we would be able to pull it off and not have to worry about CGing everything, like the people. Because, I mean, I think we could do it. Uh, and again, I'm just a huge Xenosaga fan. Or even Chrono Trigger. Like, we could we could do that with the technology we have now. Chrono Trigger, that'd be easy peasy, no problem. Uh, what TV show I would like to see turn into a game? Um, Mad Men would be kind of fun. I'd play Mad Men. I would. It's got that mafia-esque feeling. A little bit of, you know, L.A. Noir. Um... I don't think I would like, it's weird. I don't think I'd like Pacific Rim to be turned into a game, but there's games like that that are kind of similar. Um, but Once Upon a Time would be kind of cool as a, as a game. Or Fringe, oh, Fringe would be a lot of fun. That would, that would be interesting to play as a game. Got a little mystery aspect and a little bit of drama and a little bit of supernatural kind of stuff. Like, I think that'd be really cool. Or supernatural. Have they made a game of supernatural yet? They haven't. They should. That's like, have you ever been out of your home state and or country? And what places would you like to visit? Uh, yes, I've been out of my home state. And I, yes, I have been out of the country. Um, I haven't traveled to all the states in the United States just because I really don't see a point to some of them. Um, but eventually I do want to visit California. Um, but I've been to Texas, I've been to New York, I've been to Chicago, and I've been to Florida several times. I've been to North Carolina. Um, I've been to West Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, Texas, you know. Missouri, uh, been to Seattle, Washington, but I've, I've never been out to California, and I've never been out to Las Vegas, so eventually I will go to those places, and New Mexico and Arizona, I want to go to those places, definitely. As far as out of the country goes, I have not been to Russia, I think that'd be cool. I have not been to, um, I've not been to China, that'd be interesting. Or Vietnam. I've never been to Australia. I've never been to New Zealand. I do want to go backpacking across New Zealand someday. And I haven't been to India. But I would like to go to those places. Um, but the place that I do want to visit again someday is Ireland the UK because all of my friends are there and they're all like, you need to come to England and come see us and blah 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 and I'm like, I will. It's just really expensive um, but I will eventually head back in that direction and I would love to go to Spain again. Um, oh, I've also been to Mexico, um, Costa Rica specifically. I have not been to South America though. I do want to go someday. Spe specifically Peru. Uh, Alright. So, next question. Assuming you've been keeping up with E3, which games are you looking forward to being released? Okay. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is one. And the remake of Final Fantasy VII is another. Like, oh my god. Um, the new Hitman video game. And Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm definitely looking forward to those coming out. I think it'll be great. It'll be amazing. And I'm super excited about what is to come for those. Just because I love those games. Especially Mass Effect and Mirror's Edge. And definitely Final Fantasy VII. What is the biggest thing to have happened to you in your life this year? Um, well, a lot of good things have happened. Uh, I got partnered up with TGN. That was a big thing. And I got to meet my friends 
and I got to grow and build my channel. Um, I started working at the news station. But I guess the biggest thing to have happened to me in my life this year is that I finally got to meet Blackout or Robert and we're officially dating. And it's pretty serious and I'm really happy. Um, so there's that. And uh, yeah, that's basically about it as far as like good things that have happened. But I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to a lot of the new things that are happening this year. And I'm looking forward to growing my channel with all of you. And I hope that we will continue to build and become better commentators. Or I will become a better commentator. And to be able to express myself better. And just bring better content for all of you guys. Because again, you're the reason why I do what I do. You are the reason why I love doing this and without all of your love and support and all of your encouragement there's no way I would have been able to get this far and to push myself as hard as I have pushed myself and of course with all the love and support of all my family and friends and Robert if you're listening to this um, I definitely appreciate you the most because you even though we're both youtubers you've always pushed me to get better and you believe more than anybody that I will succeed in the realm of YouTube and that I'll really be able to climb to new heights. So I love you and thank you for being there for me. So yeah, uh, until the next Q&A guys, please, 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 please send me questions. Send me questions, comments. You can either comment down on the description um, below in the video if you have any questions for me for next month's Q&A or you can send me a direct message to my Twitter, or you can send me a message to my Facebook page. Um, you can even message me here on my YouTube, on my personal channel account. So just get those questions in, and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next Q&A, and I'll see you in the next video, all right? So until next time, bye.